outro. I was in like seventh grade. My dad's best friend, Uncle Bob, shout out Uncle Bob, brought his son out because um, I think he just graduated high school or maybe college. I don't know what, but it was kind of like, you know, dad son trip or something. And uh, and I knew him, but I didn't know him that well because yeah. a lot of times he was obviously in school. And then my Uncle Bob uh, would just like come over to our family's place in Cleveland. So mm-hmm. that's where I knew Uncle Bob so well. But his son might, might even played college, might even played minors for a second, but he was pretty good at baseball. And then he had a goal to go, and I think he was already like halfway done, to every major league stadium and buy a hat. Go oh. to the game and yeah, buy yeah. a hat. And so then I, I like low-key start, did it, but not very strategic. I was trying to do it um, with basketball, but it was more without like purpose. It was when I fell into it. Mm-hmm. Like Me and Omar were in Toronto, and we finished up filming. This is, I don't know, probably seven years ago. We finished up filming, and... Uh, and I just randomly had gotten an alert, and I was like, "Oh fuck, dude! Like it's a playoff game here in Toronto." Yeah. So I bought tickets for whatever, hundred bucks in the nosebleeds, and went to that shit. Um, but I think all that's cool, especially like, I guess football too, probably. Although I just, I love football, but I just don't go to that many live games for some reason. It just feels like too much almost. But like baseball games feel casual. Like, dude, it's so long. You can show up late. You can leave early. You know, yeah. it's just not that big of a deal. Where like football, there's so many people and shit. Um, it would be cool to do like a nationwide tour of maybe even both. You might be able to hit both if you go in the spring. That'd be kind of crazy, right? Because baseball has already started this week, last week. Oh, uh, last week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you could hit a NBA game and an MLB game per city, bounce around. That'd be fun. Yeah. We're, we were talking off air that um, the fam and I are going to be in uh, in New York City in July. and Actually, June and July parts of june parts of july um and uh, we're gonna you know we're just looking to take the grandkids to a baseball game because they haven't well like one of them has been to a major league game but he was tiny yeah yeah so he wouldn't remember and uh they're uh nine and six now so yeah they'll start to they're with it they're kind I feel of like six is the age yeah kind of I mean, with I'm, it i'm not a dad but i feel like six is the age like all right they're gonna remember this shit like shit really is like meaningful. They can talk. Yeah. They can like really talk. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I think that I think the younger one is gonna gonna remember it. I don't know. He's not as into baseball as the older one. Yeah. The older one is is he's about all, it. he's all about it, yes. And he, sometimes I feel like going to that stuff makes you that way though. Yeah, I, I think it definitely can. Like uh, I was in a monster trucks just because we went to a because monster you went trucks. To monster yeah, trucks. Yeah yeah. 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 yeah, that'd do it. Um yeah, and so like Mets, um, City Field. What made you choose that over the Yankees? Uh, schedule, just schedule. Who was in town? Yeah, the only yeah the only uh, Yankees game that would have worked would have been the day after we got there, and yeah. that's and, and and night game, and that's for kids. You just don't want to yeah. do that. This jet lagged and grumpy. Yeah, I mean this this is a this is an afternoon game. It's a one forty game, so it you know it that's fun it, on a Sunday, so it makes sense. So anyway, um, I'm looking at tickets and the place that we kind of normally sit anywhere we go is um is just kind of on the field level usually on the third base side sometimes on the first base side just kind of depending but not any usually not any higher than that and they're usually you know they can be expensive but they're not crazy expensive but the Mets it was like 200 bucks a seat which was in in the yeah. that section and that wasn't even like right on the dugout it was it was further outfield from that I do wonder why I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why. And then like those same seats. Is there a big game? Are they like playing the Yankees Astros. or some shit? Yeah. Astros. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Right, because Astros have been balling. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I just don't know. I don't know if they do. I don't know. At this point of the season, they're doing um, like dynamic pricing or right. not. I, don't, I have no idea. So, yeah. So, we're going up, up a level and to the first base side. And those are 70, which is, you know... Yeah, considerable. But in San Francisco, the same same seats that I was looking at, they're two hundred bucks in New York or fifty five bucks. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder about that. And that isn't even on the secondary market. I mean, yeah, yeah the, and you're planning way ahead. Yeah, way ahead. Yes, yeah. this is this is like, yeah, it's in June, like yeah. late June, June twenty ninth or thirtieth, something like that. Yeah, and it's a good amount ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's just just crazy expensive. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why it's so much more expensive. Although the Mets have like a gigantic payroll i think they have the biggest payroll but the giants this year too they spent money yeah. finally they 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 were um they're subject to the luxury tax this year but even that's for like the a, first time in a while that's like dumb business like you jack your prices up when you're winning 
not based on what you right. what, what you, you signed. spent. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. you sign a bunch of duds for yeah. a lot of money. No one's going to come watch well, you. Look, the, the Padres have been spending their fortune and have not really gotten much traction off that. You know. Yeah. The f- you know first round out is the is the best they've done in a while. So. I've been to the Padres Stadium. Is it Petco now? I don't Petco, know what, yeah. yeah. I was there at, a, I think it was a Tony Gwynn's retirement day. Oh, wow. Yeah, just randomly. Yeah, I feel like you always have to know people. So, like, my my family in Cleveland doesn't make a ton of money by any means. Um, less than a ton of money. <laughs> way less than a ton of money. And for some reason, and the, obviously the Indians fucking suck. Uh, not, not always, but... Guardians, yeah. but yes. Oh, yeah, the Guardians. Nah. <laughs> the Indians, uh, <laughs> uh, and so like we we'd always end up with sick tickets somehow. Yeah, just because like I don't know, my aunt worked in an office, and that office has somebody or she knows somebody. You just always know people, especially I feel like in cities like that, mm-hmm. um, because it's so like old family esque. Yeah, you know what I mean. Where California is a little different. A lot of people moved here. Um, families have been there for generations, so she knows somebody with season tickets mm-hmm. that she could get them from. So we sit in like, was it like club level where you're getting yeah. served? You know, and there's no way we're paying for that. Like, my dad couldn't afford it. No way my aunts could. But, you see, yeah, you got to know folks. The only thing, I, I I never went to a Browns game because they weren't a team for uh-huh. half of my fucking life. And then I, I read something, though, about their stadium. I forgot what it was. I don't want to misquote, despite the name of the podcast. But it, I think people were saying it was, like, one of the better stadiums. Because it's on the water. It's kind of like uh, the Giants stadium. Kinda. Yeah. Because it is on, like, a lake. Um yeah, live sports are cool, man. I feel like uh, it's not something like a lot of people who aren't into sports go do, but it seems like live music. Some people just don't like try it, but it, yeah. it, there's something special about both of them. There really is. And I don't really care if you like sports or not. Like, I don't love baseball, but I'll go to a live baseball game any day. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. something about it. There's something about it. Well, the speaking of more, more baseball news, but uh, this actually may be old news by the time um, this comes out, but it's supposed to be uh, decided today where the A's are going to play next year and for oh, the next three years. How's the Sacramento bid look? Decent? Uh, it's at the top really? right now. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah, it's, it's it, I mean, got some inside information yeah. on this, and that was confirmed by some stuff that was in the B today. Um, but it looks like maybe. It looks like maybe, but it also looks like the it's Las Vegas still may not happen. Really? Yeah. Long so if Yeah. But, really? well, the reason, the reason that, because... Because Oakland just made a bid to, um, to keep the A's for the interim, uh, for the next for, three, for right. the next three, and um, because of the fan boycott, and they've totally empty seats most most of the time. Yeah. It just looks terrible. Yeah, and just the the um, the general bad juju between the the team and the city of Oakland. MLB doesn't want the A's to stay there at all. Sure. Well, so, what's the op- second option long term? Um, I don't know. Um, I bet you it's, Vegas it'll go through. There's just so much money pumping in that city. It's going crazy. Yeah, maybe so. But there's, you know, I mean, the mayor is opposed, although she doesn't really have any. Um, Oakland mayor? No. the um, Vegas? Vegas mayor is opposed, yeah. Really? I wonder yeah. why. Because everything else is done so well. Uh, just the money, I think. I think the money going into it. And that's like. It, it's not as though the owners of the A's don't have money. Yeah. Well, I just because obviously hockey's been going crazy there. They won yeah. Stanley Cups on Stanley Cups. The Raiders have done okay, but the T-Mobile Arena where the UFC and the hockey. Yeah. I I just explored that area for the first time. I driven by it, but mm-hmm. I see it from the freeway. Like I don't really go to the strip, you know. And I know that sounds like a uh, gatekeepy local thing to say, yeah. but you just don't unless you're going to go get food. So we did. We went to Italy. Yeah, which is right next to it all, and they built up that section of the strip to be so like nice and like classy. Like it s- feels so good by the T-Mobile, the hockey arena, and whatever. And mm-hmm. basically, the baseball arena's plans are across the street from that, where the Tropicana is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and so it was like it would mesh so perfectly, and there's just no way. I mean, maybe it's just me, but like if I'm going to Vegas on a dude's trip or whatever the fuck bachelor and mm-hmm. you just like look on your phone like oh the a's are in town tonight like you're gonna buy a ticket you're yeah. gonna buy like a 50 buck ticket go sit go get drunk because you're walking to it on the strip yeah like it makes so much sense something randomly that was announced this morning too is like they're breaking down the tropicana which is one of the oldest hotels there and that's the future plans for the arena but behind that they're like <laughs> i don't know because vegas uh it's social media so they like you know 
pump the news story full mm-hmm. of like steroids and like make it so fantastical but they basically sound like they're trying to make like a, a man-made like like beach ocean there behind it <laughs> and so, okay and i like in vegas i kind of believe it you know yeah. like Two years ago, Bart was sending me articles about Mark Wahlberg opening a Hollywood. They mm-hmm. just broke ground on that. You know, like they they are moving like crazy because of the money. So I, I do wonder why the mayor's so opposed. Yeah, and I, I think it's I think there's a subsidy, but I think it's from the legislature, actually not the not the city. So that's why she doesn't have any control. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that that's. I bet she has no control, anyways. Uh, probably. You not. know, like the, you, when you think of casino money, like she's just probably she's not. just hanging on. Yeah, <laughs> she's just the face. <laughs> yeah, she's just hanging on, doing what they say, trying yeah. to keep them happy. That's her job. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's just like keep. Yeah, just you know, we, we need your tax money because For sure. we don't. We're not. We're not doing tax money. You know. On the same level. Yeah. No one else. is. No one in the world is. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. The Kings would, or Sacramento would be fun. It'd be really cool. I think it'd be cool for the city. I, I, remember, I remember when the fucking <laughs> Rivercats came here and how big of a deal that was. Yeah. And it's still a big deal. And now, yeah. now the Rivercats are owned by um, by the Kings ownership. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. And there's, I mean, in the paper today, and I actually heard this rumor and it confirmed in the paper that... Uh, that the Kings might be interested in, in cause they're, cause the owner of the, the like main owner of the Kings, uh, uh, you know, Ronadive and the owner of the A's are friends and have like yeah. been friends for a long I'm time. I'm sure so there's Silicon like, Valley connects. There's a, there's a potential for the, the that Kings ownership to buy the A's. If they did that, then they would not be going to Vegas. That would be silly. Another thing too. I don't the, know. The Maloofs, they ran half their empire in Vegas. Uh, yeah, but see what happened there though. They stopped spending on the team at some point. Maybe ba- basketball is a little different though, because like what you spend on the team is so limited. Yeah, it's much different than baseball is literally like how big are your pockets. I, I think that too, because you were talking about hockey. The hockey there has exploded, but that was an expansion team. It was. As the 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 Raiders have done okay. Yeah. But that they, or the Raiders have been moving around like a f- fucking chess piece. Right. That's why it's hard. Since the 80s. Yeah, it's since hard. Since the 70s? Yeah, I don't know. Before, yeah. yeah. They've been everywhere. Yeah. They've been all over the place. That They would maybe have been better off with an expansion team. And maybe. I, and I think that that's probably true of, um, of baseball. Yeah. I don't know when and, the and last time the NFL expanded, though. It's been a minute, yeah. yeah. And it might have been like the Rams in them in the 80s. Yeah. And then... Um, why isn't I mean basketball? Uh, it's planned. The next expansion there, there's the contract is like giant for, um, like the players' union or something. There's some giant contract that's supposed to get done in these next two years, and then he's already said they're basically going to ex- expand in 2026, 20, 2028, 20, and it's almost guaranteed it'll be Seattle and Vegas. Yeah, Seattle, I could see. Seattle yeah. was pissed. Yeah, for having lost. Yeah. Their team to... Yeah, I don't know the next expansion around that, too. Even though they might have called Oklahoma an expansion for some reason. Because something else maybe moved. Obviously, it was the Sonics at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know when they expanded either. But, yeah, I think they're going to add a couple a couple more. Yeah, I don't know. Y- expanding a league like that, like scaling any business is so hard. But an expansion team is, like, probably so difficult on the back-end numbers to figure out when it's time to do that. Well, I mean, part of the thing, too, with an expansion team is, like, all of the existing team ownership gets money. Yeah. But don't that. you have, like, at least in the NBA, I think you chalk up, like, two players. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, like, a yeah, you know? a, a, a Rule 5 draft is what they call yeah. it in, in um, yeah. one of the sports. I don't know. Not, yeah, I don't know either. Yeah, but basically, yeah, you, you, you have to expose a couple of players to... Yeah. That's scary. But then the money, yeah, the money aspect. Like, what if you just don't sell tickets? Yeah. Yeah, well, like, Tampa Bay, they don't sell tickets. Uh, football, oh, yeah. Okay. So they got uh, Tommy. Baseball, either. Oh, yeah. Baseball. You never heard about the Rays. They don't. Because football's done okay lately. Yeah, football's done okay, but but baseball has not done great. And I think they have hockey. Yeah. And I think they do good. Do they? Which makes no sense. I don't follow hockey like that, but, like, I don't know. And obviously it's an indoor sport, so who gives a shit? But when you think about Tampa Bay, yeah, I'm not thinking about hockey. Or folks that like hockey. Yeah. Right? The, the idea of going to see hockey, and obviously there's fans everywhere, but the point is that you probably grew up watching it and playing it, so then you go watch it. If you grew up in Tampa Bay... You're not thinking about hockey. Not no. once. Even Sacramento. Yeah. Right? Like, Sacramento's way icier than Tampa Bay, and it's not a thing here. Yeah. You know? 
it, it is it is an interesting business. The what? Kings the Kings A's thing is interesting though. I mean, I I think a pro league could probably or a pro team could probably hang here, and arguably better than Oakland. Maybe better than Oakland. At yeah. least just because of the history. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. The, the history of the A's yeah is, isn't very good since the eighties. No. Yeah. No. Well, it's part of it. It's just not spending any money, and yeah. and Moneyball only works so far. Moneyball will get you in maybe the first round of the playoffs if you have chosen very well. Yeah, and I think another big issue is just culture of the West Coast. Kind of like we were talking before, like there's so many transplants that like to be like a diehard A's fan. Yeah. Like how many people are born and raised genera- generationally in Oakland? Yeah. Probably not that much. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're either going to try to move out or you're going to try to go to the Bay. You know, mm. you're wiggling around. We're like, I'm telling you, like Cleveland, even Vegas, I am surprised how many signs there are, mostly hockey, but like every car's got a night sticker on it. Yeah. In Cleveland, you literally can't drive by a house in the suburbs without an Indians, uh, a Browns, an Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Like they're everywhere. Every single house has a, has a sign on it. You know? Like my aunt, like... She listens to every game on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's crazy. You know, they're they're about it. They're about yeah. it. And and you just don't get that out here for college or pro. The yeah. Kings fans are pretty good. Kings fans are pretty good. But it's not like that. Yeah. I, th- I think, too, that like we're talking about a, a expansion versus um, relocation. A, a team relocation a little, is a little bit like adopting a teenager. Yeah, you it's know? hard. It's it <laughs> is hard. N- nobody knows exactly how to respond. That's why it hasn't gone crazy with the Raiders, everyone thinks, because, like... Uh, yeah, the Raiders are just like a travel team. You know, they've been yeah. they've been in four cities in the last four decades. Yeah, and their fan base is like mostly L.A. people. Yeah, now, yeah, you know, it, which is crazy. And so, like, yeah, they just don't care. They just haven't like adopted them yet. But if they win some games and if they like show they're there a while, you know, maybe the Rams got some love in St. Louis, and they've another team that traveled everywhere. Yeah, you know, now they're back in L.A. and they're probably getting a little bit of love. Yeah, the Chargers in L.A. too. Everything's. Yeah, there's a lot of movement for how much money that is. Yeah. Now that we're just a news reporting show, I saw that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I saw it. So we, when I'm in fucking like high school, it might have been when I was 18. It was like my first voting experience. We were voting for the bullet train, right? Mm-hmm. Sa- San Fr- or Sacramento to San Francisco to Los Angeles. Fucking sick. Vote that, man. Take my five cents. You know, I don't mm-hmm. give a shit. That still like literally hasn't happened. It's yeah. from like Merced to like Bakersfield, and even if, even if, yeah, a couple of years to go. Still. Yeah, and that was so that was state funded and state run, right? Yeah. Program. Yeah. They just announced, uh, which is it is fucking genius, and it, it does make me think there's puppet masters going out there. They're going uh, San Diego to Seattle, bullet train in the next two years to get ready for the World Cup and what? and the future uh, Olympics. Because what's the Olympics twenty? 30 2028 yeah, it's la i think and then the know. world cup's 2026 and so they're trying to go vegas which i think it's an arena san mm-hmm. francisco gets a r- arena they announced a the schedule we should fucking buy tickets is what we should do i'm trying to see Messi by chance that he comes but they're going uh i think they said three and a half hours good lord bullet train How which makes me think doing that so fast yeah uh, makes me think that there's no stop yeah, maybe. Right, it might be direct, and you're probably going, yeah, 300 miles per hour, you're just screaming. Yeah, if there's no stop, and they go through, like, the central part for majority That's of crazy. it. crazy. I don't know any about th- anything about this at all. Yeah, yeah, I just saw it yesterday. Wow. Which is crazy. The the LA one, or the, yeah, which is whatever, because it's like Rancho Cucamonga. It's still better than nothing. Uh, to Vegas has already been digging. You can see it on the freeways. And I think it's going to run in between the freeways. Oh, which, yeah. Which is kind of easy. It makes sense. The path's already drawn and then they showed the uh, and then it lands you i think in the strip which is cool that, and the and yeah. the uh, uh, train station looks all fancy and yeah. nice it, it, it doesn't really make sense that we haven't tried that nationwide well yeah we abandoned so much of it is the yeah. problem yeah. yeah like we walked away from it and then recreating it is, is super expensive yeah. and especially like any any you know civic project in in For sure. America costs a fortune. Yeah, and the hoops you got to jump through <coughs> zone, zoning or whatever. But yeah. there's powerful folks. You, yeah, I would just think like an, some trillionaire would go to Amtrak and say like, hey, let's like just replace your shit. Yeah. Right? Like it's literally just old tech. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and you could just haul ass. I mean, imagine you get from Sacramento to Boston in 10 hours. Yeah. Right? And you make it 100 bucks or yeah. whatever the shit. Uh, yeah, like, well, and I mean, last... Last summer we went from or, or late spring, early summer we went from you know London to Paris in a little over two hours. Yeah, on that's the train. so normal. 
Yeah, super super normal. Everyone just does it, and yeah. it, it just the whole infrastructure, the rail infrastructure in that part of Europe is just outstanding compared to anything that we can do here. Yeah, I've done New York to Boston, and it was through Madison Square Garden Station or whatever. So yeah. that was cool, um, and that was convenient, but it wasn't that fast. Yeah, it's not super fast. And the, and then and the it was pretty convenient because it does dump you downtown to downtown, mm-hmm. and the seats were nice and shit like that. But like, yeah, it makes no sense to me. Yeah, I think we're going to do either New York to Boston or New York to Philly yeah. uh, at the end of this New York trip. Yeah, I think that train's good, too. Philly to New York. And then even, yeah. like, uh, D.C.-ish, I think you can all get to the kind of, like, square yeah. via, via train. I think they're doing a bullet. Don't quote me, but I think they might be trying to do one from, like, Dallas to uh, Houston, too. That would be interesting. That's the article I saw is, like, up-and-coming <laughs> bullet train projects. And I think they're all private because that's the only way you're going to get it done. Yeah. Then it's going to be expensive for sure. To, that's to the, build and expensive to actually get on too. That's, but. that's the back end of the Vegas one. Like they're rumored to like charge three hundred bucks a ticket, and like no one's going to buy that. Yeah, that's a little more expensive than the flight. The is. flight's the same cost. Yeah. yeah, cheaper cost and quicker, and it drives four hours. Isn't that crazy? Like you're going to have to wiggle that to get some demand, but yeah, in the future maybe. I don't know. I I, I there if you're if you're in another country, it, it makes more sense too because sure. you don't know where you're going and where you're doing. Sure. It's easier to let somebody else do the driving. So it's true, true. Uh, yeah, but uh, if how do you not do one on the West Coast when our cities line up literally perfectly? Yeah, right. You go San Diego, L.A., Sac and San Fran, Portland, Seattle. Yeah, if they could have run a, run bullet train along with I five when they built I right. five, yeah. that would have made sense. Literally, it would have looked like a Disneyland monorail, but still, you yeah, know, yeah, considering the time that it was built. Yeah, but if you're going, yeah, 300 miles per hour, <coughs> bless you. Yeah, you're just whipping. <coughs> it just makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah, same idea. You think about tourism, let alone, like, everyday folks that could commute. Mm-hmm. Everyday folks could have literal jobs anywhere. But then, yeah, you're from Europe and you fly to San Diego, you could visit the entire West Coast in one trip. Mm-hmm. To visit the U.S. seems so hard if you're not from here. Yeah. and <laughs> Like, and, where do you start? And people from... Either even people from other parts of the of the country think that California is like sure easy to get around in, and it's not. Yeah, no, it's impossible. And and you know, L.A. and Sacramento are not close to to each other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even San Francisco and Sacramento. Like, if you're like from Europe or something, like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna rent a car. You're gonna rent an Uber. You can train. Yeah, yeah. And even that's a bitch because you gotta take buses in between and trash to get city to city. I think you can go straight on the train. Uh, last time I did, you couldn't. You really? Yeah, it was a while ago. But yeah, you got you get dumped off in like Oaklandish, then you gotta take a bus, like then, you, then you gotta go Bart. Yeah. Yeah, it's just annoying. Yeah. Caltrain? Caltrain. Maybe. Yeah, there's definitely a couple hoppers in between. Which there is are, stupid because we're an hour away. There are the big buses right now too. Yeah. You know? Yeah, buses are kinda outdated too. Like I get that it's crazy affordable, but Yeah, the new ones are actually supposed to be pretty nice, like Wi Fi and they're clean yeah. and all that stuff, and they're not charging that much. No, they're cheap. They're cheap. Um but yeah, but but also you have to know about those things. Like yeah, you got to look into the travel guides and all right. that kind of stuff. Figure out where to. And they'll take forever. Yeah, it's not fast. It's yeah, not fast. Bus takes forever. For sure, you can't take a helicopter. We don't have flying cars yet, so. Soon. Yeah, giant drones. Yeah, yeah, drone buses. Um, yeah. So, something that uh, I just wanted to throw out here today was. Uh, uh, this article that I got pointed to from something else that I was reading. Free the hub. About uh, about people talk about porn addiction. Basically, like, oh yeah, I'm addicted to porn, or I was addicted to porn. Free the hub, you pervs. It isn't. You're not a thing. You're just a sicko. It isn't a thing. <laughs> You're just a sicko. Studies have shown that it isn't a thing. I wonder how that relates to sex addiction. I I don't I think that there's a good possibility that sex addiction also. Uh, it, Addiction also does not exist, but porn, I'm just human, people. Porn addiction. I'm just human. Yeah, I was. This is an article from Psychology. Just Today human from, trying to procreate from 2018, so not new. Yeah. This is like, and I don't, know, I don't know why this is not like trickling through the culture a little bit more than it than it has. Some of it's just funny too, like not to be uh, non empathetic here, but 
you like uh you're like opening up you know and it's like very social media stuff yeah. like it's very common to talk about this kind of stuff yeah exactly you know? and it's common to talk about all like traumas right because you're trying to be relatable and you're trying to yeah. tell your story which i do believe is a positive of social media right to make you feel not alone that someone else mm-hmm. lost a husband or whatever whatever even going through heartbreak like it's more relatable now than ever because you s- can visually see other people going through it but it's just like yeah you're open up on a heart to heart and then you, you say like porn addiction and we've almost categorized it so much because they talk about it. But like when you really think about someone's porn addiction is crazy. Like you're just fucking stroking your cock too much. <laughs> yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like your your issue is just fucking going crazy. There are certain like characteristics of addiction. Yeah. And that porn does not meet. And yeah. Well, like- I know like one like like base level one that at least I go by and some therapists and stuff have talk to me about it's just like yeah like how is it affecting your regular life right right so like are you literally sitting in the shower and say like i have to go to class right now class is at nine o'clock and then you just jerk off for an hour and miss class is that like happening every day that yeah that would be a lot right but that is like what would make addiction or like yeah i have this meeting or i'm supposed to meet sebas for dinner but i just jerked off for two hours instead yeah right like doing something a lot doesn't mean you're addicted Correct. Right? Yes. Like, I work out. I'm definitely not addicted to working out. I drink yeah. caffeine. I'm definitely not addicted. Yeah. I just know, you know? Yeah. So, the, this study actually looked at a bunch of different studies, and the thing that they found I thought was f- very interesting that uh, people who describe themselves as being addicted to porn or afraid that they're addicted to porn or whatever don't use that much porn and the the morality problem r- around oh. it is it's like a guilt it's religiosity it's, it's like a guilt relief to say you're addicted exactly when you're just a normal jerker yeah and the real addicts like us don't talk about <laughs> it. don't talk about it exactly <laughs> like just the keep three that of shit us to yourselves <laughs> It is funny because like I'm sure there's some people that can actually be addicted to anything, right? Yeah. And then you gotta go find help to screw your way through that. Right. right? Whatever it is. Um and those are often the people that may have a story to tell. But I do wonder, yeah, the people that talk about it freely and anything. Like yeah. people have talked about steroids or they've talked about workout addicts, which yeah. is a thing, I think. And I don't know clinically, but again, you can hypothetically get addicted to anything in individual, whether yeah. it's a big problem or not. I think is the discussion here. But if you like, don't go seek help because if again, yeah, joking aside, like if you're the real addict, you're not talking about it because you don't know, right? Like you might be ashamed that you jerk off a lot or something, mm-hmm. but you're you don't you're not you're not kind of like you said, yeah, the real ones you might have a guilt. So they express this addiction, but you don't like express that addiction typically until you've gone through like therapies and programs to realize where you're at. And you don't go through therapies and programs to realize where you're at until it's so negatively affecting your real life. Mm -hmm. Right. You're broke. Your wife left you. You sold your car for the new Playboy magazine. Right. Like that would be the porn addicts path, which you hear about with alcohol Mm -hmm. and, and other things like but the people talking about it, uh, there's one big YouTuber I know. I don't know if we mentioned. He talks about it all the time. We can talk about it. Fousey talks about it all the time. But Fousey talked about getting, and this might be different, but the same. I think he, and I don't know because people are so good at making content. He could just be funny. Mm-hmm. But he talks about getting rub and tug so much that he was an addict. Mm. And went broke through it. And then, like, I think. That's a lot of rubbing and tugging. That's enough friction to start a forest yeah. fire yeah and i don't know what the price range is on them <laughs> things but and he obviously you know i think he, he suffers from bipolar disorder and mm. some other things that obviously all accumulate all this together, but but yeah. he's gotten help yeah you know i've watched his streams and he's he's literally on the phone with his therapist um who's like jake paul's therapist like all these famous people's therapist and she yeah. seems actually fucking dope uh-huh. like on the phone call i'm like dude this lady seems so awesome um and it's clearly helped him in some ways but yeah i wonder sex addiction porn addiction but i think he went broke doing it right which again probably leads to like oh maybe that was an addiction maybe and then he got a, help yeah. yeah i think he had to go to aa because i think he was doing something maybe he's just drinking i don't know but he was doing something so he went through like legitimate therapy yeah. then or program and then that therapy and then he comes out and tells a story like that seems normal to me rather than like 
I don't know. Yeah. The only thing I could, yeah, like caffeine, I guess, would be like my one of my bigger vices, if you wanted to call it that. And it, and it used to be one of mine, and I just I can take it or leave it. it now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I really I like the cup of coffee in the morning, but like it's it's not not drinking nearly as much as I used to. I don't usually drink it at other times of day. And I bought a I bought an espresso, which gives you like an es- like a double espresso amount of coffee, yeah. and you can americano it up a little bit with some more hot water. But like it's not it's it's two thirds of what I used to drink in the morning, yeah. and I don't go back to it most of the time. Some of mine is I just like all the drinks. Yeah. Like, I love the taste of coffee. I love soda type things, so I love energy drinks. Rather than, yeah, I drink so much of it, I don't really get buzzed per se. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm I, not, I'm drinking less and I'm not more um, susceptible to it yeah. as far as I can tell. Yeah. As far as I can tell. Um, this article makes the point that porn addiction is not diagnosable anyway, and it never has been. Interesting. Uh, but so it's not in any... Med DSM, whatever. No, uh-uh. I do understand. I guess now, uh, to defend my porn friends, as I just ripped you apart, being fake, there is something wrong with, and it's new. So I, th- I do think it's still going to evolve. But the human addiction with uh, technology, right? Because things that seems like a possibility, right? Yeah. Because of the instant gratification that you can get from anything. Yeah. Oh, I'm a shopaholic, or I feel good when I shop. Mm-hmm. I can shop quicker than I've ever could shop, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And I do believe, because the big argument for some of these people are on the alpha male, you know, masculinity train. And some of it I agree with. Where, like, back in the day, you know, to, um, excuse my words, to bust a nut, you would have to, one, uh, walk into a shady place and grab a Playboy, Mm -hmm. right? And, like, like do that work to go get it. Or or, or wine and dine a, a beautiful partner. Mm-hmm. You know, male or female. I don't know what kind of porn you guys are watching, but you'd have to go. And you we're know. okay with whatever it is because well, we don't have to watch with you. Yeah, as long, we don't yeah. have to watch with you. I don't want to so hear about it. I don't want to hear about yeah. it. You know, yeah, you'd have to, you know, find a woman. You'd have to get the courage to say hello. Yeah. You'd have to say, hey, could I get your number? Hey, you want to go grab dinner? You buy your dinner. Hopefully, you do that a couple times, and then you get to bust your nut. Right? There's like, but you're not having porn sex then either though well you know again i don't like to judge uh, how how wild and freaky deaky some of these people may be but yeah yeah l- like long Jerry. story short yeah it, it, the, the the phone's such a shortcut yeah to this end goal um but then i guess to play devil's advocate and i'm hypothetically speaking because i'm not a historian back in the day it was probably simpler too though you know whether you want to talk caveman or whatever there probably wasn't as much whining and dining going on, right? One, there's arranged marriage, mm-hmm. right? So you're not doing shit. Your parents are setting you up with, with your nut busting. And then two, you know, pre- previous to that, it's probably ooga ooga. I'm strong man. You know, you're with me. Yeah. Whether you know I agree with that or not, but <laughs> there probably wasn't a lot of wine and dining. But I do think it probably wired your brain not good in many ways, and I'm guilty as anyone, um, just to have so much power in your phone. Right to affect our mood, yeah, yeah. negative, positive, dopamine, and all that shit. So I think that it might be more of a tech addiction. Yeah, and I, yeah, potentially, yeah, or dopamine chasing not, not, addiction, not something. specific to to porn, but specific to being. Yeah, yeah you can like get such highs and content. You can get highs and lows in ten seconds. Yeah, Where for it, sure. You know, again, we take away technology, and the highs and lows comes through such a long thing. You're either hearing a story from a friend and then you're getting sad or happy or you got to go do this and X, Y, Z. But there's like paths to the dopamine hits and shit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, also you're talking about dating. Like, I don't know if dating is easier or harder, but seeing what's available or who's. Oh, it's way harder. We're fucked. I'm single forever. (laughs) No, it's fucked. Yeah, it's fucked out there. You 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 haven't done the, the app thing? I've played with the apps. It's fucked. It's all fucked. Because then, like, same, I, it's almost worse. I was just talking to uh, some of the members out there about, like, the interview process of works and businesses uh-huh. and how flawed that is. Yeah. Right? Like, someone is obviously showing up prepared to tell you what they think you want to hear. Correct. Well, what do you think a dating app is? Yeah, pretty <laughs> right? much, they're, yeah. They're telling you what they think you want to hear, so maybe you got a chance to make them maybe feel cool to then go on a date with them, and they fucking suck. And they got nothing going on. No, it's all – I do think as much as the Internet has blessed me in my life – for many ways, it, it's uh, it might be a net negative, man. What yeah. do they call it? Web two. I think we're technically in Web two, where Web one was a place to like store stuff. Mm-hmm. Web two is a place where you can interact with stuff. I was even just talking to Jordan out there and how Web two, the internet's basically become a marketplace. 
There's yep. not a lot else going on the internet besides money transactions for something, right? Netflix streaming, you're paying for it, right? Mm-hmm. It's all consumer based or even B2B. It doesn't really matter. It's all a marketplace where back in the day, yeah, it stored data, right? You'd find the dictionary online. You'd mm-hmm. read that or whatever the fuck blogs. And even now blogs, right? Like, yeah, you, you can, I'm not saying you can't learn on there, but they're selling you something. Um, and I think that might be part of the issue here as well. Yeah, I think that's that's possible. But I, I, my my point was like there are people on apps, and if you're trying to connect with people, they may not be the people that you want to connect with, but there are people there for sure. It's easy. Yeah, but yeah, I mean that's what like Tinder, even still to this day, I don't know. Subos is younger <coughs> me, but I think it's just known as the fuck app. Uh, yeah. Right, like yeah, you're just going on so. Tinder because everyone's just trying to fuck. Fish. Yeah, no, I think some of those people are dating. Do you think? Yeah, that's dating? what I'm saying. They each have their own like culture about them. Uh, yeah, they each have their own culture about them. Yeah, I think plenty of fish are the more mature folks. I've heard of, like friends, parents, or moms, it's or whatever. People who are dating. still using Facebook. So yeah, yeah, Christian yeah. Mingle. It's the Facebook gen. Yeah, Christian <laughs> Mingle and plenty of fish are the Facebook gen for sure. Even though I'm kind of the Facebook gen, to be honest. Yeah, no, you are. For it sure. literally became college accessible or public accessible when I got into college. Yeah, yeah, like literally that year. So I'm definitely Facebook and, gen. And that was originally a dating app, or well, not even a dating app, a rating app. Yeah, yeah, for sure a rating app, literal. But yeah. even a dating app after that, like we, you'd go to a party in college, and then like next day, like you're getting friend requests from the chicks, or you're friend requesting a chick. Yeah, it's oh. the same as Instagram now. But yeah, there's just so much of it, and like yeah, you're scrolling profiles, you see what you want to see. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it it is messy, man. It is it is uh, the internet's changed so much shit in life that I think the issue with it isn't the change. The yeah. issue with it is that people don't recognize the change. They don't take the time to realize, like, oh, man, like, dating is fucked because of X, Y, Z. Or yeah. I'm, I'm scrolling around like crazy, or I'm on Tinder swiping like crazy. I'm beating my meat every two hours like crazy because I'm looking for this, actually. I think that's, it's like actual self-awareness. Because you can blame tech, but that, it's all on the mm-hmm. individual. Um, I've never missed class beating my meat, you know? <laughs> I don't think cut, I missed anything. Probably cut it close meat. a couple times, but not, you know, probably yeah. missed it. Yeah, I took morning class. I was too tired. <laughs> but I don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But it is very common. And and some of it is selly. Because you see it's the it's the alpha male guys. Because then they're they're doing that and then they're trying to sell you how to date course on the back end. Yeah. Right? Or how to raise your testosterone or how to be a man on the back end. Yeah. And I, I think that it it claiming that you're addicted to porn and that you're trying to you know, work on your porn addiction is a virtue signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of it. I mean, the whole internet's a walking virtue signal now. Yeah. I hate it. What do they call it? Uh, semen retention. Oh. Semen retention. That just sounds dirty. Semen retention. That's good. That's good for your masculinity. That's n- no nut November. Yeah, yeah. Of, no yeah. nut lifestyle. Yeah, except that that... I mean, I, I don't have an article for that, but there are articles for that. That's, yeah, there's it's, no it's way. It's a problem, yeah. And again, like I, I, I don't love the argument of going like, well, on an evolutionary sense, what do we are, but, you know, but but a lot of things you can start to string back down, and like we have a trillion goddamn semen for a reason. We're made to bust nuts left and right. Yeah. So then, like, why would you be addicted to busting nuts left and right? Yeah. I guess it's not a jerk off addiction. They're talking about porn, but still, then it's the a technology accessibility issue. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it, it's entirely different issue than it used to be when as you were saying yeah. you used to go to a bookstore or like you could get a you could get a playboy at the grocery store but you couldn't get and it was in sure know, brown paper wrapper yeah 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 but you you can't get couldn't get anything else you right get and they're not addicted to that and are you no. saying because it's hd now on pornhub like i don't think that's why people are i don't think that's why i think there's just so much of it right and it's it's the accessibility yeah right because you can click twice and get there and and, and then be all fucking but all, and all, and the type probably yeah right? almost yeah, Playboy exactly, isn't having yes. like eight cocks, no. twenty women, and a monkey in there. No fucking a monkey, man. The hub's got everything. <laughs> you know, I think that's probably a bigger issue too. And I'm not here to kink shame. Like if you're into all that, you're into whatever the fuck you're into. But I do think the accessibility, you know, some of it. Yeah, it's weird, man. Internet's weird. You find anything on the hub. Yeah, people find all sorts of things to get excited about yeah that do not appeal to other people what's weird is you know when the when the contours of those things you know people are, are 
having been exposed to it or not been exposed to it or whatever all kind of look the same for certain kinds of fetishes or whatever yeah you wonder like if, how, if you're actually attracted to some something i joke about this with my sexuality but if you're actually attracted to something you sh- and and maybe i'm just talking my ass but in my opinion i don't think you need to be exposed to it first to know if you are or not probably not right they're like oh you gotta suck a dick to see if you're gay like no i know <laughs> i never had to think about it like i know i don't want to suck a dick yeah you know what i mean so like maybe that's another issue with porn is that you hunt for crazy shit then you're gonna be interested in crazy shit although you might not be actually just attracted to crazy shit right yeah. if i if i'm 12 never been on the internet and i close my eyes and i see myself you know doing whatever <laughs> xyz then maybe I'm attracted to X, Y, Z. But if I'm 12 and I have access to the internet and I just am a, a crazy kid, every yeah. kid at 12 is crazy, and you start hunting for crazy shit because you're looking for shock factor because you're fucking 12, now all of a sudden your brain's getting programmed for some weird shit. Now, is that an addiction? I don't think so necessarily, but I do think those are issues mm-hmm. that maybe, again, these people who, who claim porn addiction are are laterally like the arguments lateral to what their virtue signal yeah and i i don't know like it, it's difficult to unpack when someone comes out on, on social media and they're like oh, almost addicted to porn or whatever being addicted to sex is, is the the diagnosis is compulsive sexual behavior disorder yeah and and that like the the world health organization uh is excluding excluding the moral conflict part that seems to be driving the 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 bad feelings around porn um from that it's just literally like their person's religiousness isn't really isn't really a factor in doing it it's that they have some other they have a like diagnosable disorder yeah yeah uh, around it but the yeah, pe- and it's probably not just high test no like probably. there's some wires that are probably a little twisted a little twisted yeah but but the people who are coming out to say these things either they're they're literally virtue signaling yeah. or they um or they believe that that something is real, and they see aspects of that within themselves, sure. and they come forward. But they're also, you know, reaping the benefit right. of people attention. Yeah, money. exactly. I think that's the bigger issue of all of it, and all the social media. And my issue of where social media has gotten is, I think there's a very fine line of like being vulnerable and being authentic, and then um, finding or helping people that can relate to your story. Mm-hmm. versus taking advantage of that. And I literally do think 80% of everything I see on the fucking internet feels like a virtue signal because people are talking about it so fucking much. The things I've opened up about in the history, I don't talk about all the time, and I was even thinking about this the other day because um, me and Abby, Abby just, uh, it was a little Jerry's birthday, so we went and got ice cream, and Abby drove me in. I forgot how it started, but I talk about my best friend passing away. And that's like something I've talked about on the internet, but it's not something I talk about in every fucking episode because I want everyone out there to pity me for losing my best friend. Yeah. Right? And so, like, and, and uh, I'm not ashamed of it by any means, but it's, it's, like, an uncomfortable thing to talk about. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to rethink about my best friend dying and going to that hospital. I think that's why we were talking about hospitals, and that brought it up or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to talk about that all the time. And I've never been a porn addict, but if I was or were, you wouldn't. Be I probably wouldn't be stoked on it. Right. Right? Yeah. And so, like, I wouldn't. You wouldn't find any clout from it at all, right? What you're saying, yeah. yeah, and like, and maybe once or twice I'd open up about it and th- try to really help and relate to people out uh, there, or or I'd go on a mission to find therapist to interview or something that really helped that cause or donate my money and time to like help mm-hmm. that cause if I really think it's a thing. But I don't think you're stoked about talking about it all the fucking time, and and maybe I'm maybe they're more courageous than I am, but that's with anything, yeah. You know, whether it's like escaping a cult or any like crazy stuff, you don't want to talk about all day every day. It doesn't feel good. Right. Uh, and if it's real, I don't think it ever feels good. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Right? Like, Because sure. then the uh, people's argument would be like, oh, well, if you talk about it enough, you normalize it for yourself. But uh, like, if you went through it, yeah. I don't think it ever becomes normal. I, th- I mean, you and I have, have both lost a best friend. Yeah. And we've both lost at least one parent. Yeah. And if we talked about it all the time, that's just who we would be to everybody. Right. And yeah, you're like it's branding. Yeah, That's it's what just, virtue signaling is online is you're branding yourself in this niche. Yeah, it's a, it, it, it's a thing that people can connect to us about 
on the rare occasions that we bring it up. Right. Because everyone will go through this stuff, and I and we get it, and we want to relate, and it was a dark time, and it is part of who I am for yeah. sure. Like it has built yeah, me yeah, in me, a lot me, of ways. Me too. Me too. Yeah. I remember going through it and thinking, like, damn, this is going to like be part of me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just don't think you're like stoked on talking about it all the time. If yeah. you're fucking, especially porn, that's fucking embarrassing. Yeah. You, right. I talking mean, about jerking off is like kind of a dude locker room thing, but like, yeah, you're just not like. You fucked your life up by t- t- playing with your cock? Yeah. Like, that's not something to be stoked on. So that it just feels virtue signally based on that, I think, for me. That 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 if it was that deep, you just come about it a little different. Yeah. And it is just, I'm telling you, it's so common. All this stuff. And even, like, the open relationship stuff that was yeah. a big trend online. E- okay, so you're into, you're into polygamy or whatever. That's cool. One, I don't care. Two, and I, and I get it. Like, maybe you're trying to share the way for other people that don't believe or can't mm-hmm. relate with monogamy okay that's cool but like then again all you want to talk about is that all you want to talk about is dating five people at the time and how to do that probably not like you're probably virtue signaling you're probably making money somewhere on the back end mm-hmm. you're probably selling an ebook on dating like it's just all of it the internet's gotten to a really weird place for me and, and, and i'm very yeah iffy on most things i consume because of that like i'll watch a bunch of stuff and 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 if you're straight up about what you're making money on, then it feels a little better. Yeah. Like comedians, why do they send clips all over Instagram? Well, because they're trying to sell their shows. Exactly. But that's yeah, like so. To watch. But that's it's all harder great. now to get people to watch things than it's ever been. Yeah. Because there are too many, For too sure. many options. But that's great to me. Yeah. You're trying to show me something funny, so then you are selling me funny on Netflix or in person. Like it's so relatable. But like, you know, say you are a real porn addict, whatever that means. Uh, and then you're going to sell me like, like one, you're probably not a doctor. But you're going to sell me some masculinity or, like, anti-porn thing. Or then, yeah, you're swinging so hard the other way that you're, like, anti-porn. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, it, I'm not it, pro-porn, but... Again, that's a branding. You're right, right. And then you're probably selling some shit that's, like, not clear. Yeah, yeah. Like, we talk somewhat fitness here, but we just talk life now. But because we're s- selling a gym, we have a gym. <laughs> yes, we have... Like, a, it's not like a, a... We have an apparel line. We yeah, have a gym. Yeah, it's not like... We don't sell the apparel line. It's probably as much as we could, but anyway. But it's not like a hidden agenda. No, no, it's not. You know, it's not a sneaky agenda. Like, yeah. we work out. I like clothes. We, we got a place to work out and buy clothes. So. <laughs> like, it's pretty simple. Yeah. It's and, and, and yeah, it just feels weird when you're doing all that. There's no, there's no like, backdoor pitch that... Yeah, it, or unrelated. Or unrelated, yeah, yeah. I think I think what people really are is addicted <clears throat> to attention. I would agree with that. And that's yeah. where, that's, and I don't know if that's diagnosable either. Well, I guess it is in terms of maybe like narcissists and shit, but that's so extreme. Uh, that term's getting... One, it's hard to find people who are like classically narcissists. No, the, it, people use that term all over the internet because they did one online therapy Zoom call and now they think they're narcissist pros, but like... An actual, like, NPD, like, narcissistic personality disorder is fucking so rare. It's yeah. there. They're out there. Uh, but uh, it's rare. Yeah, it's, it's 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 more the case that some people are just assholes. Right. And disregard other people. It's not, yeah. you just, know, and put and put themselves first. But, like, the classical diagnosis no, of, far. of, of uh, narcissism. Yeah, it's far and few between. Personal, personality yeah. disorder is not. Yeah, some people, yeah, just selfish and unaware. Not They're not self-aware. But... It, I do think the internet is breeding more of them. I think that that's probably true, yeah. Because that's what they say, a narcissist, uh, everything's mostly nature and nurture, right? Right. Uh, and a lot of times it's kids that either got too much attention mm-hmm. or kids that got no attention. Both can lead to true NPD. And what's the internet doing? It's just making that louder. Yeah. Kids, kids that want to be a content creator and can't get any fucking attention or kids that want fucking attention and all of a sudden blow up. Yeah. So what's it going to create? What's it going to create when your whole life from this generation on is about internet clout? Yeah. And it really is. I'm listening to a book right now. Um, by the way, if you have a Spotify account you're paying for, you can get like 15 hours of audio book for free. Yeah. Not, not additional, whatever. So, um, And the library. I just had to say it because my mom yells at me all the time. Yeah. So I, li- bought a, I bought like an Audible t- thing and my mom yelled at me. And then she's like, you know, you can just do Audible books from the library for free. I'm like, yeah, all right, my mom. wife says the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just... It's an easier interface. No, Spotify's so good. Yeah, Yeah, Spotify's good. Um, And and I have an Audible account that I'm literally paying for as well. But I just uh, guilt myself by buying the book. Yeah. Then I'll go listen to it. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? I buy like a nine ninety nine audio book. I'm like, all right, fuck, I better listen, listen to, to this. It, yeah. <laughs> um listening to this book called Clanlands, which is about um it's about Scotland, but it's a it it was a TV series, like a reality kind of TV series with um a couple of the actors from um uh Outlander. And they're both they both have you know Scottish backgrounds and whatever. So they did this series, and the, the book this book is the companion to the series, except that it's very behind the scenes. Like yeah, I mean, if you don't understand how reality shows are filmed, yeah, this is a, like a pretty good insight of of how how people think about it and like what they what kind of shots they set up and what they think is going to work on TV and whatever. But it's not like you're not seeing the real because there's no real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it does it pull the veil a bit. It uh, yeah. qu- a lot, yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot. You but know how scripted it is. Yeah, but I what, learned that early. Shout out my boy Kenny Zantucci. He was just the first one, and he was one of the first reality stars ever. Um, and he just straight up told me, "He's like reality TV. If they control the environment, you act real. Yeah. If they don't control the environment, they're gonna uh, script you. Right. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. It totally. That totally makes sense. And that's yeah, what the real world was. They controlled the environment. Yeah. So they put the vodka in there, and they put who's in there, and then he's like, they didn't tell me how to be. I was me. But they controlled everything around me. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a lab experiment. Yeah. Like, and that's what makes it interesting. That's why I watch live streams. Because live streams feel like that. Yeah. It feels like truly authentic. You don't know what's about to happen. Yeah. So one of the actors is in, in a spitting distance of my age. And there is one bit of one chapter where he talks about this very close friend of his who died in a car accident and how he felt about it and... and um, uh, he, in the course of it, makes a tribute to this guy by doing this thing that this guy would have enjoyed had he been around, whatever. And, and I was very affecting to me personally. And I have like a little bit of a, a mental connection to that actor now that I didn't have sure. before because I know we've been through a similar thing, not the same thing, but a similar yeah. thing. And now, like now he's told the story one time, every once in a while he'll reference that person and what because that person was part of his life. Sure. But you're not hearing the whole fucking story again. Yeah, it's not his whole Instagram. Not, yeah, it's not his whole life. It's not his whole branding. It's not about how sad he is. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that frustrates me about about people on social media is they'll they'll do a, a they'll make a post that is inscrutable. Like you can tell there's a fucking sad thing going on or whatever, but they don't tell you what it is. It's like why bother? Right. Like really? Like it, well, they're it, just it, trying to like foreshadow or something. It, it's literally if, like writing a script. Either tell the story in a way that you can kind of close the loop on it so people understand what you're saying or you know it's a it's a text to people who know you i mean yeah. instead of putting it on social and no, like, it's just a screen for attention yeah it is yeah. like yeah and i mean or i mean i did that on myspace but i was a fucking 12 yeah right? exactly like, uh, eventually exactly. you grow up and you yeah i put a sad song when i was sad yeah but i was 12 years old i didn't know what else to do you know but like and hopefully you grow up and you move on beyond that yeah it is just like an attention positive loop because you tell the story about me jerking off too much it gets a bunch of likes yeah. well every week i'm going to do a post about me jerking off so much because yeah. i got a bunch of likes and, and then it becomes viral in the not necessarily explosively viral way but in the in people's heads viral way yeah where someone says oh geez maybe i'm addicted to porn right no 100 percent. and then they then they attach to your content because you're going to tell them how to drop the hub uh, yeah. yeah i don't i don't understand i don't get it at all put your dicks away yeah. Everyone listening. Seriously. So, yeah, this thing, this article says the moral incongruence around pornography use is consistently the best predictor of the belief that one is experiencing pornography related problems or dysregulation. And comparisons of aggregate effects reveal that it's consistently much better predictor than porn use itself. Yeah. I mean, so, it makes so much sense to me because, yeah. like, psych diagnoses like this have been around. Yeah. And, and porn addiction hasn't been around. No. The, what changes the internet? So you may be addicted to the internet. Yeah. But you're probably not addicted to you're porn. Probably not addicted to porn. Or addicted to your phone. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, new episodes Wednesday, Friday, Third Street Barbell, Sacramento, California. If you're ever in town, stop on by. Uh, 3SB.co for all your apparel needs. New sock drop coming very, very soon. So stay tuned to that. If you want to get involved, goodcompanydiscord.com. Um, that's a, a like minded community, early access to all our drops. 
and I'm in there chatting all day. So I'll see you on goodcompanydiscord.com. I am at DJ McD on all the social media. And by the way, I'm gonna I will link this article so you can read it. So you can it's not just coming out of my mouth here. Uh, this show is fifty percent facts, where percent is a word and fifty is just numbers. Fifty percent facts is a Spreaker Prime podcast in association with iHeartMedia on the Obscure Celebrity Network. 